Welcome back to Chemistry 3.4. In the second PowerPoint, we're going to start looking at periodic table trends. These periodic table trends relate to electronegativity from level 2. As you may remember, electronegativity is the ability of an atom to attract electrons. And electronegativity increases across the periodic table. So on this side, there is low electronegativity. And on this side, there is high electronegativity. You might also notice that electronegativity is highest at the top of the table and then decreases as you go further down the table. So we know that that's the trend in electronegativity, but why? What is changing as we go along and down the periodic table? So the first thing that is changing is the number of protons in the nucleus. As we go along the periodic table and then down, the number of protons in the nucleus increases. More protons is pulling the electrons in more tightly, as you know, positive and negative charges attract each other and so if you have more positive charges in the nucleus it will pull the electrons tighter. The other reason is the distance between the nucleus and the valence electrons. With electricity the further a positive and negative charge are away from each other the weaker the attraction or repulsion force is. When you go down the table, the electrons are located further away. And because they're further away, the attraction force is much, much weaker. And so this counteracts the protons pulling the electrons in. So as you go down the periodic table, you'll notice that the electronegativity drops. The final effect is a relatively minor effect, but still worth mentioning, and it's called shielding from inner electrons. Positive charges and negative charges attract, but when there are electrons in the way, these electrons have a negative charge. And so because of this, the electron won't quite be pulled as strongly inwards, because this electron is essentially blocking it. So some new terms now. The ionization energy, or IE, is the amount of energy required to remove one valence electron from a mole of atoms when they are in gas state. And so ionization energy is saying, if I was to take out one of the valence electrons, how much energy would that take? If you think about it, it relates quite a lot to electronegativity. Because if, let's say we have a really high electronegativity, so fluorine does not like to give up its electrons easily. You're going to have to put in a lot of energy to make fluorine release its electron. As we go across, ionization energy increases because of increased electronegativity. As we go down, ionization energy decreases because the electronegativity is decreasing. Some more new points, atomic radius, an actual measurement of the size of an atom. If an atom is bigger, it will have a less big electronegativity. So now we've done that with atoms. You can also do the same thing with ions. And we have the ionic radius, which is the size of the ion, exactly the same as the atomic radius, except instead of atoms, we've got ions. So let's have a look at a question they might ask. So discuss the information below for each of the following particles. So they're asking the difference, why does O have a higher electronegativity than SE? So I'll go back to the previous slide now. SE, selenium, is down here. So it's in the same column, but in the fourth row rather than the second row. So that's all the information we need. So we say that selenium has more electron shells in energy levels, so the valence electrons for SE are further from the nucleus than O, and there's increased shielding from the inner shells. This means the attraction force is decreased, there's a weaker electrostatic attraction, and so selenium has a lower electronegativity than oxygen. So let's look at another one. So we're looking at Cl and Cl-. And we'll notice that Cl- is way larger than Cl, and we need to discuss why. So, Cl- has an extra electron in its outermost energy level. Cool, so we've discussed that. This causes increased repulsion between electrons in the valence shell, and so the electrons move farther apart. This makes Cl- bigger than Cl. Both Cl and Cl- have the same number of protons, and thus the attractive force of the nucleus remains the same. So that's how I would talk about that. So let's look at the last one. First ionization energy in kilojoules per mole. Lithium versus chloride. You might notice that chloride has a lot more energy required to steal its electron than lithium. So let's go back and look at them. So we have lithium on the second energy level with one valence electron. And we have chloride on the third level 
with 7 valence electrons. So this is a slightly more complicated one because they've asked us for two things. So firstly, the valence electrons of Cl are in the third energy level. This means it has an extra energy level, and so the valence electrons are located further away from the nucleus. However, and this is the important part, the distance and shielding increase is not as significant as the very large increase in protons between lithium and chloride. Chloride has 17 protons, whereas lithium only has 3. Because of this, this offsets the fact that chlorine's valence electrons are further out and makes it have a higher electronegativity. Because chlorine has a higher electronegativity, it is harder to take its electrons away and consequently it will take more energy. This means that the ionization for chlorine is higher than lithium. So a summary of what you need to know, you definitely need to understand what electronegativity is and it's the measure of attraction between a nucleus and a pair of bonded electrons. So how much an atom or an ion likes to hold on to its electrons. The first ionization energy, that's just asking us about how much energy would be required to remove a valence electron from a mole of atoms when they're in a gas state. And so you might realize there's a relationship between these things. A high electronegativity means a high ionization energy. It's hard to take electrons from something that likes holding its electrons tightly. You need to recognize these patterns. You can either remember them or you can try and understand why they happen. The last thing you need to know is that positive ions will be much smaller than their atoms and that negative ions will be much bigger than their atoms. Alright, thanks for listening to this PowerPoint. On the next one we're going to talk a wee bit about Lewis diagrams. Cheers.